Now, question seven is something that you might find familiar. It's about using LEDs to work out Planck's constant. So you might have done this as one of your uh, practical assessments or one of the required practicals. Basically, uh, you've got to basically discuss how you'd use this circuit to determine the accurate values. So accurate is important for uh, the, 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 the minimum PD. And then how data from the table can be used to graphically uh, determine a value for the Planck constant. So there's lots of stuff there. But hopefully you should be aware of this. So first of all, uh, this circuit here, what you do is you have different LEDs which have different colours. So you might start out with something maybe like red, maybe move to orange, to yellow, to green, and then perhaps blue. So we've got different colour LEDs. And what you find is that these all have a different threshold voltage. What I mean by that is if you look at the actual IV characteristics for an LED, what you find is that there's a certain PD at which they turn on, which is this point down here and different colour LEDs have a different threshold at which they start emitting light. Effectively, the higher, so the shorter the wavelength, the higher the frequency, and therefore the higher the energy of the photons emitted. So, what have I said? I've just sort of sp basically put it in bullet points and kind of spelled it out. So, what I've said is you adjust the poten oh, that's my phone. Uh, you basically adjust the potential divider down to zero. That's my first thing. You then connect the flying lead to LED number one. Uh, you then uh, basically adjust the PD up until this LED just comes on. And I've maybe added a bit more detail that you can do it in maybe a dark area. Or maybe you do it where you look down a straw, so you have a kind of black straw, and you actually put the straw over the end of this LED, and that means it's easy to see when it turns on. You can then repeat this and get an average for V min. So this value here is the average of maybe three attempts at doing this. Again, you know this, this is kind of basic stuff. You repeat your results to get a better value and identify any anomalies. You then do the same for LEDs 2, 3, 4 and 5. Spell it out for the examiner. Treat them like some kind of idiot who kind of uh, doesn't know enough, doesn't know what you're talking about. Imagine you're speaking to like a six-year-old. So basically spell out what is obvious. You're going to do it to 1 and then 2 and then 3 and then 4 and then 5. Spell it out and make it very clear in your answer. But we need to know about something which is graphical. And this is the way that I think it should be done. You basically have a graph where you plot uh, your values of one over the wavelength against your uh, threshold uh, voltage. And what you should find is that you get a straight line that goes through the origin. Why is that? Because the energy given to the photons, which is equal to the charge in the electron times V min, so we'll assume 100% of the energy goes into the electrons, uh, elementary charge, P, minimum PD equals HC over lambda or HF. So, what does this mean? Well, the gradient is going to be equal to your change in 1 over lambda over v min. So my gradient equals 1 over lambda over v min. But we can also rearrange this equation here to make 1 over lambda over v min the subject. And again, that's probably not great. I probably should have sorted it out a bit better. But basically, what we can then say is that rearranging this, we can say that 1 over lambda divided by v min, that's my phone again, is equal to E over hc. So, if you work out the gradient, the gradient equals E over HC. But we also know that, uh, yeah, basically you equate the two things together. The gradient equals E over HC. We know E from our data books, we know C, and we've worked at the gradient, and we want to find out the Planck's constant. And therefore, Planck's constant is equal to E of the gradient times C. And basically, this is your graphical method for working out Planck's constant. Okay, the next bit, if you know your stuff on uh, quantum physics, which I think is pretty interesting, then this should be familiar. And again, I think I've got a video up here about it. So basically, how does the graph show that uh, the wave model for EM waves can't explain what's happening? Well, what we're talking about now is the work function. And basically, the wave model can't explain the threshold frequency, which is this point here I've marked on the graph. If you had um, basically lots of light, it should mean that if, if light was only a wave, as soon as you had a high enough intensity, it would start liberating electrons. But what they found is that if you had certain frequencies, perhaps red light, even if it was really intense, the frequency, even of that, that kind of light, wouldn't allow uh, electrons to be liberated. And you had to go above a certain, certain threshold, which meant effectively one photon, which was a particle of light, was liberating one electron. The other thing it can't explain is why the kinetic energy increases with frequency. It should mean that basically once you get uh, the light that comes off the 
you know, it, the, the, the kinetic energy would really depend on the intensity of light, not on that. So the kinetic energy increasing with frequency is our second bit of evidence. Okay, now some maths. Uh, what is the Planck constant? Well, this is Einstein's photoelectric equation. HF equals 5 plus Ke max. Now I'm going to rearrange that to make Ke the subject, because Ke is what's been plotted on the y-axis. So I can say that Ke is equal to HF minus uh, 5. And effectively what we now have is our y value is Ke max. The frequency has been plotted on the x-axis, so that's our x value. And that means that the gradient m is equal to the Planck constant. So I've worked out the gradient. What you should always do when you work out the gradient is actually draw it using your ruler onto the graph. So I'm going to draw a big triangle. I'm going to maybe look at my x and y coordinates at different points. And uh, basically you can use these coordinates to work out your gradient. So show the working out. And this makes it easy for the examiner to know that you're doing the right thing. So the gradient is equal to the change in y with the change in x, which equals 6.31. Uh, and again, because that's 10 to the minus 20 and that's 10 to the 14, this gives a Planck constant of 6.3 times 10 to the minus 34, which is close enough to what the real value should be, which you can always check in your data book. The next bit, what is the threshold frequency? Well, that's basically the frequency at which uh, photoelectrons are emitted. Read it off the graph and the answer is 8.5 times 10 to the minus 14. So, that's very much, uh, you know, one of the latest, what well, is often the harder, seen as the hardest question. One of the later questions is actually really easy, so that's just reading it off the graph. Okay, the next one. Um, I started basically down the wrong avenue. I thought, well, okay, effectively the work function is equal to minus the y-intercept. And on that last graph, you always have a negative uh, y-intercept, which means you then have a positive uh, value for phi. But I realised I didn't need to work that out. I didn't need to kind of uh, use the graph to find it. If we know that at the threshold frequency, the kinetic energy of the photoelectrons is effectively zero, we've just got them out of the electron. We know that uh, HF equals phi. We've just worked out F in the last question. We know Planck's constant because that's uh, given to us in our data book. And therefore we can just multiply H times F to get our value of phi which is 5.634 times 10 to the minus 19. So I've given it there as 5.6 times 10 to the minus 19 joules. And that's about an appropriate number. So it's about sort of three electron volts. So that was the paper. What did I think of it? Um, actually, I didn't think it was too bad. There, was no, there were some tricky questions, but I don't think it covered anything that wasn't on the course. I think that everything asked you was fairly fair. I think there's some, you know, the, the long answer questions were pretty tricky. But your exam this summer, or whenever you do it, is going to be testing your ability to talk about the practical experiments. So I thought it was a very fair paper. It was quite tricky, but uh, not unlike the kind of thing that you might be able to expect uh, when you do your real breadth in physics paper. So I hope that's useful. Um, again, you know, subscribe to my year 13 material for next year, and hopefully you'll do very well. Thank you very much.